Video games, a pop culture phenomenon that stretches back decades and decades and has gone through many phases and many technological upgrades. Once upon a time, the video game industry was once considered a kid's place. Now, in so many aspects, the gaming industry isn't only for kids, but for everyone, with games varying from different degrees of playability, maturity and violence. I could eulogise the impact of the industry all day long. But today's video is about the machines that played all these wonderful video games. My favourite consoles that I ever owned. It's going to be a nice little fun ride, so strap on and enjoy. Starting in order in which I first got my hands on them. Number 10. The Game Boy. So kicking off this list is the Nintendo Game Boy. This legendary little device which lasted over a decade plus. I first had my Game Boy somewhere around 92-93. As I grew up in a very strict household and console gaming was largely banned, owning my own Game Boy was as good as it got. I have to mention though that the Game Boy was in actuality both mine and my little brother's Game Boy. But as I was the older sibling, I got to claim roughshod. Many hours were wasted on this as a kid, so much so that my little bro and I were heavily regulated into how much time we actually got to spend on it. Some of my favourite video games on this device included Super Mario Land, Super Mario Land 2, Tetris, Tiny Toon Adventures, TMNT Fall of the Foot Clan, TMNT Back from the Sewers, Home Alone and many, many more. Too long to list here. Many fond memories and hours and hours of fun. The Game Boy was the very first console I ever owned and it's first here on my list. Number 9. The Super Nintendo. The very first out and out gaming console that I had craved for years and years had finally arrived in my household in 1994. After years of spending weekends at my friends' houses or them coming over with their own SNESs, I was finally able to play my very own SNES. And I didn't waste any time getting stuck into my perennial favourites. Super Mario World, WWF Super WrestleMania, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, TMNT Turtles in Time. But those weren't the only games I got stuck into. There were games like Art of Fighting, NBA Jam, Sunset Riders, TMNT Tournament Fighters. I saw the adverts for this console and for me that was the only console I wanted as I thought it was the be all and end all. A huge upgrade on the original Nintendo with bright colours, better arcade conversions, fun platformers, fun two player versus and co-op games. It was nothing but fun times with the Super Nintendo and sits proudly as the very second console that I ever owned. Number 8. The Sega Saturn. Only my second foray into the world of Sega. The 16-bit era of the Super Nintendo vs Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis was the battle of the century during the 90s and I was firmly in the Nintendo camp. Now whilst I had dabbled with the Sega Mega Drive through friends and family, the Super Nintendo was always the one for me. So the jump to the Saturn in retrospect was a strange choice. I really don't remember the full reason as to why, but I do remember a classmate saying that he had a sibling who had brought a Sega Saturn and that somehow got the wheels turning in my head. Christmas 1996 arrived and so did my Sega Saturn and the very first games I played were Sega Rally and Virtual Fighter 2. Virtual Fighter 2 in its own right was a revolution in fighting video games and I feel the inspiration behind the Tekken series. As I am an avid fighting games fan, of course my collection included Street Fighter Alpha 2, X-Men Children of the Atom, Marvel Super Heroes, the excellent and very underrated Fighters Mega Witch, which could really do with a re-release on modern day consoles. Come on Sega, what are you waiting for? Other games that I played on my Saturn were Sonic R, Virtual Cup, 
WWF WrestleMania. Now, amazingly, I never owned the world-renowned Panzer Dragoon Saga. I know, disgraceful. But they were in short supply and there was only available on import. So I have very fond memories of my Sega Saturn, playing all these games for hours on end. Now I sadly chose the losing side as the Saturn was comprehensively beaten in the war against the PlayStation. Poor sales and difficulty in programming the software led to the Saturn's downfall. I'm of the belief that the Saturn was an underrated machine and if Sega had their house in order, this machine could have had so much more success than it had. Still, it's on my list of favourite consoles ever. Number 7. The Nintendo GameCube Jumping straight back into Nintendo's arms after my brief fling with Sega, I did own an N64 and a Dreamcast in between, FYI. This design was unlike any other console that I ever owned. A nice little purple lunchbox, then it used mini laser discs instead of the traditional DVDs. Now, whilst it wasn't the console that I most fondly remember, I did spend a lot of time playing X Men in X Dimension. Are you seeing a pattern here? X Men fighting games? I was reacquainted with Sonic Adventures after playing it on the Dreamcast. I was not a particular fan of the shape of the joypad itself, but it was eventually something that I got used to. One game that I never really got to play on the GameCube up until recently was Mario Kart Double Dash. I had seen videos of this floating around for years, but I never got round to playing it. And having played Mario Kart Wii later down the line, playing this felt just as fun. Graphically not as good as the Wii version, but still a similar feel with the use of the double character selection which was so much fun. Given the compatibility with the Wii, keeping your GameCube was worth it. If only for you to hunger for some of that GameCube nostalgia. Number 6. The PlayStation 2 Finally, my first foray onto the Sony side of things, and I haven't looked back ever since. I had resisted the first PlayStation as I believed, rather stupidly, that the Saturn would eventually catch up. Nope, and with the demise of both the Saturn and then the Dreamcast, the next logical step was to cross over to the Sony side of things, and I did not regret it. The PlayStation 2 went on to become the highest grossing game console of all time and with its vast library of great games, it's not hard to see why. This was the console that introduced me to the Pro Evolution Soccer series that I still play to this day, but there were other games that I got stuck in over its life cycle. The WWE Smackdown series with Smackdown Shut Your Mouth and Here Comes the Pain games I enjoyed and to me, the best games ever produced for the WWE. I got reacquainted with Marvel vs Capcom 2 after playing it on the Dreamcast. Capcom vs SNK was a brilliant game to get stuck into. There were other games that I dabbled with as well, like Lego Star Wars, Vampire Knight, X-Men Legends. These were amongst the games that I got stuck into. But I never did manage to complete any of these lot. Strange that. I was playing the PlayStation 2 well into the Xbox 360 vs PlayStation 3 era. Now unlike the PS4 and Xbox One, I believed by that time the PS2 had come to the end of its life cycle. Its resources from a technological point of view had well and truly been exhausted. Every game released on the system had pushed the boundaries of what a modern game console could produce. And with its vast library of classic titles, it's not hard to see why to this day the PlayStation 2 is the most successful gaming console of all time. It's a console I still own and every now and again I'll play a few games for that great trip down memory lane. Number 5. The Xbox 360 Here we are, the seventh generation of gaming consoles had arrived and they were taking things to a whole new level. The advent of online gaming with Xbox Live was a brilliant invention as now you could game not just with your friends online who lived in the same country, but anywhere in the world, and other gamers who had access to online gaming with the Xbox Live accounts. I was well into my adulthood and this was simply next level stuff for me. Games wise, I continued my love affair with the Pro Evolution Soccer series, and this would prove to be a great source of entertainment where I worked. 
plenty of time and so a backlog of office work pile up that's how addictive things got in the office Call of Duty Modern Day Warfare was the number one game gamers played online at that point in time I played the single player campaign for a short while but then never got around to completing it are you seeing a pattern here are you seeing a pattern here it was online multiplayer with my friends where I had the most fun. Shooting and screaming at each other for hours, it never got any better than that. Until I played Street Fighter 4. If you haven't, please do check out my video on Street Fighter 4, the master of the modern day fighting games. I credit Street Fighter 4 with really and truly getting me into online gaming, a lot more so than Call of Duty. There were tons of online matches with players across the globe, which resulted in me using cuss words I normally wouldn't use because the online players were just simply on a whole new level. Now tantrums aside, Xbox 360 was the first console where I personally experienced the joys of online gaming and the bad as well. Other games I played over and over again were Soul Calibur 6, Marvel vs Capcom 3, and a whole host of Xbox 360 games downloaded from the Xbox Live Store. To sum it up, the Xbox 360 was a real game changer and a console that took me to a whole new world of gaming. Number 4, the Nintendo Wii. This was the 7th generation of console gaming and the Xbox 360 and the PS3 were going head to head, but then came along a new challenger. We would like to play. Now with Nintendo falling behind Sony and Microsoft in the last console wars prior, it was looking to make a big statement and get back into the game. And boy did they make a splash. The Nintendo Wii came along and it came from a completely different angle. It was mini disc technology and it was vastly inferior to the PlayStation 3 and the 360. But that wasn't its main selling point, it was all about having fun, taking a Wii remote and basically making a fool of yourself whilst gaming and no game in the Wii library en encapsulated that more so than Wii Sports. Whether it was tennis or boxing or baseball or bowling, it was silly but great fun playing this game. My favourite one on the Wii. Wii Play, which came as part of the console bundle, was also a fun one to game along to. I did love the table tennis and air hockey games especially. Now again, just lots of silly fun with this game. Now some of my other console favourites included the excellent Mario Kart Wii. To date, my favourite Mario Kart game ever. But I've not played it on the Switch yet, so that could change. There were some duds though, duds like Emergency Mayhem, what the hell is this? And then you had the Pro Evolution Soccer game, but this was not a game built for the Wii, given the way it was designed. It was just simply awful. Having the Wii provided a great alternative to the 360 and PS3 in terms of the type of games it ran that you simply wouldn't get on the other two consoles. It was a real family machine as I would often game with my nephew and sometimes my folks and on top of that its online store gave you access to retro games of which I downloaded a few. It also had backward compatibility with the GameCube. So being able to take all this on board the Wii was a really awesome machine to have in my collection. Number 3 the PlayStation 3. Now the seventh generation cycle was fully complete now that I finally went out and got myself a PS3 after years of hesitating. As it had most of the games I liked on the 360, I had to be very selective with what I brought on this machine. The WWE Smackdown vs Raw games were a constant source of go-tos for me. Having played the Pro Evolution Soccer series to death on the PS2, it was carried out here on the PS3. King of Fighters 12, King of Fighters 13, Sonic the Hedgehog were amongst the games I played a lot on this system. 
Having the PS3 saved me buying a Blu-ray player and it really turned into more than just a game console but an all-round entertainment unit as I did use it on occasion to play my CDs before those went extinct. It's a system that I personally still play today having downloaded games like Puzzle Fighter, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, the machine still gets a lot of playtime in my household. Yes I know this can be done with PSN but I have sentimental connection to the PS3 so I never got rid of it and I still continue to play it like crazy. And plus I'm a collector, why would I throw away my retro consoles? Number 2 The Nintendo DS only my third ever handheld console. This one was a lot of fun, especially on the commutes to work. A double screen with color, a stylus pen which was a new take when it came to gaming. Amongst the games played were New Super Mario Brothers and Tetris. As I was at an age where I was responsible for my gaming and no longer had to go begging the folks for new batteries or new games, it was all on me and how much I had in my wallet. And I did indulge. My top two games were Mario Kart DS and Tetris as my go-tos if you will. Hours upon hours were spent on train rides to work, in my lunch time and even in my spare time at home playing all these titles. I already mentioned New Super Mario Brothers, which was a return to the old school for Mario and Luigi in their 2D environment, made famous by the original Mario Brothers run. TMNT was also a decent fighting game platformer similar to classics like Turtles in Time and Fall of the Foot Clan, only not quite as good. Overall I loved my DS and all the games that I got for it. It was in so many ways the Game Boy for the modern day generation with all its unique features like the stylus and the ability to connect online with other DS owners. The DS was a resounding success and a memorable addition to the legacy of video games. And now, the very last major console that I purchased. Number 1, the PlayStation 4 the last major console that I've bought so far and it has served me very well over the last six years or so. A Blu-ray drive which I've used to watch some Blu-ray movies but most important of all a machine to game with because that's what you do with gaming machines apparently. Now up until the PS3 I had dabbled here and there with downloading games online from the PlayStation Network store now I am downloading game after game after game like it's going out of style. Now as you may have deduced I am forever the fighting game enthusiast. It should come as no surprise that the fighting games dominate my library. Ultra Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5, Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3, Virtual Fighter Evolution, Tekken 7, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. Oh, but that's not all. The Pro Evolution Soccer series before it was transformed into what is now known as eFootball was another regular go-to. I was spent playing on the CPU on the hard level followed by some online matchups, which usually ended in defeat for me. Are you seeing a pattern here? Are you seeing a pattern here? Not the best online player. Now playing Pro Evolution Soccer was quite the addiction for me and it still is. First person shooters like Fortnite and Call of Duty saw me expand my horizons for my usual gaming niches. Streets of Rage 4 was a much welcome return to the nostalgic platform gaming from the 90s and was a lot of fun to play. The recently released and much anticipated Shredder's Revenge has been an absolute gem of a game to play, paying homage to fans of the 80s TMNT show. Taking bits from previous games and adding new modern elements has made this, in my opinion, the best Ninja Turtles game of all time. A version of Tetris called Tetraminos I acquired for a bargain £3.29. 
And whilst it's not quite Tetris from Game Boy and Nintendo fame, it still keeps those core elements that made Tetris the global success it was. But this covers my thoughts on the PlayStation 4. To date, it's my favourite console ever, thanks mostly to the cool features offered by the PlayStation Network. And due to the ridiculous shortage of PlayStation 5s, owning a PS4 ticks things over nice and steady, until PS5s are more attainable in the future. So there it is, my top 10 list of gaming consoles that I owned. What do you think? Do any of you own any of these? What are your favourite consoles of all time? Do any of you even remember some of these consoles, especially if you've only been gaming for like a decade or so? That's the younger generation. I feel so old. So please do hit me up in the comments and let me know what you think. There's nothing quite like video games and each of these consoles has offered great gaming experiences that quite frankly, no other entertainment medium ever could. I'm K-Man of Smugface Entertainment, that was my top 10 gaming consoles list, and thank you for watching.